President Mohamed Buhari says he understands people's concerns about the growing insecurity, but assures that security agencies are not relenting of their duty to keep citizens safe. The President's state of mind was conveyed by the National Security Advisor, Major General Babanga Namunguno, retired at the end of a Security Council meeting convened at the instance of President Buhari. Tipa City State House correspondent Femi Akonde reports. Another Security Council meeting, which again reflects the mood of the nation and depicts a frightening security situation that for now has defied all solutions thrown at it. The outcome this time is an announcement that security agencies are working on a new strategy to deal with existing and emerging threats to national security. The members of the armed forces have also made a commitment that in the coming weeks they've already started working on a new strategy to deal with these snippets of violence and they've given their word, their commitment to the president that there will be a change in momentum. Data from the Nigeria Security Tracker, a project of the Council on Foreign Relations of the United States, reveals that activities of violent non-state actors had claimed more than 5,000 lives nationwide between January and June this year. At least 996 persons were violently killed in January. 765 in February, 1,214 in March, 917 in April, 594 in May, and 736 in June, totaling 5,222 in the first half of this year alone. It is at this Security Council meeting that new strategies to end the killings and violent crimes are conceived and a plan of action is developed. But to stop this escalating insecurity, the federal government insists it must be with the support of citizens. In this type of asymmetric conflict is a collective effort. It's not something that should be confined to only the security, intelligence and law enforcement agencies. When we keep saying whole of society approach, whole of government approach, to get a whole of nation approach, what it means is that everybody has to partake in this enterprise. Already the security threat level in the federal capital has been raised, especially after the recent ambush of soldiers from the Presidential Guard Brigade. The Kujie jailbreak is another breach of national security that has left many questions unanswered. The council is in the process of winding up the special investigative panel on the Kujie incident. And the idea is to come up with recommendations, hold those who are supposed to be held accountable for their deeds and to ensure that this type of thing never, ever, ever happens again in this country. The federal government also acknowledges that citizens are tired and gravitating towards self-help. It appears the federal government is also worried about how the media reports issues of insecurity and the effect it has on the population especially as the events in recent days have impacted the approval rating of President Buhari's administration. But the president is in a race against time to turn the tide. Femi Akonde, TVC News, Abuja. Also in Abuja, Nigerian military authorities say operations are ongoing to make the federal capital territory safer. The director of defense media operations, Major General Bernardo Yeko, who also disclosed what transpired when troops encountered terrorists near the law school inquiry, assures residents of improved security. Tiffany Sien has details. Recent security breaches coupled with reports of plans by terrorists to attack Abuja continue to put security forces on edge. Patrols have been stepped up just as more troops have been deployed in strategic locations. 
At this news conference, the Nigerian military authorities provide some explanation. Armed forces of Nigerian security agencies wishes to reassure Nigerians of its community, of its commitment and determination to provide security for its citizens. With the recent operations carried out between 23rd and still ongoing, we wish to assure the Abuja residents in particular that we are undaunted and we are unrelenting in our efforts to ensure the safety of lives and property. People should go about their normal businesses as their safety is assured. He also delves into troops' recent encounter with terrorists near the law school in Buari on the outskirts of Abuja. Troops of 7 Guards Battalion and 1 in 7 Special Forces Battalion, in conjunction with the air component of Operation Wild Punch, conducted clearance patrols around Buari general area between 24 and 26 July, two successfully cleared Kau and Ido villages. Consequently, about 30 terrorists were neutralized after the bombardment, and their enclaves and hideouts were destroyed. The military's account of the incident raises more questions in the wake of a condolence message by the governor of Kogi State, commiserating with families of two officers of the guys' brigade said to have died as a result of the encounter. C4 ACN TVC News, Abuja. In Odo State, Gavna Rotibi Akaridolu says no person was killed in the West Day attack at a construction company in Owo area. The governor, who was accompanied by heads of security agencies in a visit to the scene of the incident, said two persons who sustained injuries in the attack are responding to treatment. He urged the people of the town to go about their lawful business. Clearly. What happened there yesterday night was not an attempt to kidnap anybody because they went away with nobody. And we have in these premises over 100 people live there. Whereas there was sporadic gunshot uh, to the wall. Well, they never went inside to kill anybody. It's better for you for everybody to know. Meanwhile, Ondo State Police Command says it has launched an investigation into the West Day attack at a construction yard in Owo. Spokesperson of the command, Fumilayo Dunlami, who reviewed this today, said the attackers used explosives at the scene of the incident. He urged residents to go about their businesses as police is on top of the situation. Immediately we had those two, the commissioner of police himself led a team of men again, uh, including the anti-bomb squad to our war. That same yesterday evening, the, and the anti-bomb squad confirmed improvised explosive device at the scene. And the commissioner of police and the command as a whole, we are calling for calm that investigation has started concerning this issue and we will get back to the public with our findings. We want to also urge our people to please, this is not the time for us to start peddling fake news. Please let us be calm. We'll get back to you and tell you what exactly happened after investigation. And it's some relief at last for the family of Hanifa Bubaka, the murdered five-year-old pupil of Noble Kids Academy. As a Kano High Court today sentenced Abdul Malik Tanko and Hashimo Ziyaku to death by hanging for finding them guilty of kidnapping and killing of the pupil. They were charged on five counts of criminal conspiracy, attempt to kidnap, abatement, kidnapping, and concealment of truth. The offences contravent the provisions of sections of the Penal Code, Laws of Kano State 1991. In his judgment, Justice Usman Naaba sentenced Abdul Malik Tanko to death by hanging and five years for conspiracy. He also sentenced Hashim Mishiako to death by hanging and two years for concealment and kidnapping. The court also sentenced the third defendant, Fatima Jibrin, to two years imprisonment for attempt to kidnap and criminal conspiracy. The five-year-old Hanifa was abducted by Mr. Tanko, who demanded ransom from her parents and also reported to have killed her in December last year. Talking health now, as the world continues to experience outbreaks of diseases, religious bodies in Nigeria are not leaving its management and containment to government alone. And this is why the Redeemed Christian Church of God is sponsoring the health bills of 500 patients 
across the country. Godwin Aguam reports. The outbreak of diseases such as COVID-19, Lassa fever, sickle cell anemia, and monkeypox has continued to dominate global discourse. In Nigeria, the management and containment of these diseases is becoming more worrisome given the increasing rate of poverty in the country. It is for this reason that religious organizations are beginning to assist government in encouraging citizens to seek medical attention and help food their bills. The RCCG is one of such religious organizations and has decided to sponsor the health bills of 500 patients in commemoration of its 70th anniversary. The body in Nasara State is visiting the Dahatu Arab Specialist Hospital to carry out its Christian social responsibility. The church is celebrating 70 anniversary and uh, we want to thank God for our Father and the Lord that he had the boy that make it fit for us. We are visiting 70 hospitals in all, in all federation and um, we are fortunate that uh, Lafia is part of the hospitals that have been allocated for the, for the visitation. But the church is coming in through Christian social responsibility, what the world refer to as corporate social responsibility. Why are they coming in? The only way out is through revelation. Revelation is what terminates affliction. Global pandemic is an affliction. And so we are coming to ameliorate this through what we call acronym wise as Shenbach, whether in sport, in health wise, education wise, mass media, just to mention a few. Miriam Abdullahi is a sickle cell patient at the Dahatu Arab Specialist Hospital. She has been in and out of crisis in the past eight years and her health condition has left her parents devastated. Suko has finally come their way through the assistance of this clergyman. Mira Mabibu is also a patient here. She shares a similar story. This act of kindness by the religious body is a call on other organizations and public spirited individuals to participate in the sponsorship of health bills. Godwin Agram, TVC News, Lafia. You're watching Nigeria today. Now to electoral matters. With the 2023 general election less than seven months away, there is tension brewing between INEC and its resident electoral commissioners. Some recs are reportedly unhappy with INEC's decision to do away with the results of party primaries that they monitored and replace the names of the winners of those primaries with those who did not participate in the process or who were defeated during the exercise. Kemi Fuladi Emo captures reactions from some senior lawyers on this issue. According to INEX National Commissioner and Chairman, Information and Voter Education Committee, Festus Okui, INEC reserves the right to take certain decisions without recourse to the Rex, whom he says are not recognized by the Constitution as members of INEC. This stands met strong opposition from senior advocate of Nigeria, Michael Zekome, who appeared on TVC Breakfast on Thursday, he says INEC, under Section 153 of the 1999 Constitution as amended, was itself created by the Federal Executive Body to organize and regulate elections in the country. He also contends that INEC needs the RECs, who are also constitutionally recognized, to effectively monitor polls across the Federation for INEC. Because the 12 national commissioners are the chairman are more like bureaucrats like administrative officers that hold the headquarters together who are their eyes on the ground it is the resident electoral commissioners section 115d of the 2022 electoral act stipulates that no person shall sign or obtain more than one form as a candidate for different elections but Festus okoye adds that no candidate violated this provision adding that those who obtained and signed multiple forms were only aspirants and not candidates. Let the courts decide that aspect. We, we are lifting candidates. As the, uh, in that, the word candidate, we are now going to interpret with what does candidate mean in, mean in the context. Mm. You cannot become a candidate except you have been an aspirant. Mm -hmm. 
you cannot have you could not have aspired to be president and at the same time simultaneously aspired to be a senator for now all eyes are on the INEC chairman professor Mahmoud Yakubu to see how he will intervene and solve this apparent chisms within the nation's electoral body INEC should investigate there may be litigations <clears throat> have enough legal representation ensure that there is consistency in their defense of their position. And that's why I said they should not also begin to make pronouncements that will fuel more litigations. And ahead of the general election next year, life coach Linus Okore has urged young people to take decisions that will bring about quality leadership. He also challenged youths to shun what he calls to mark infrastructure so as not to mortgage their future. Correspondent Statistics show that the youths make up a sizable share of the nation's population. Experts say when properly channeled, the vibrancy, energy and potentials in the youths can propel a nation's socioeconomic and political growth. Reports by the National Board for Technical Education estimate that about 90 million youths in Nigeria are unemployed graduates. Over the years, the youths, especially the unemployed, have become ready-made tools in the hands of leaders who use them for their own selfish political gains. Getting the right leadership has been a major obstacle in Nigeria's developmental process with corruption and governance on the rise. This leadership course provides an opportunity for selected youths to reshape their lives for a better Nigeria. Dreams have always had so that we can begin also to consistently now empower our youth and also begin to give back and also, you know, uh, empower them enough so that they can begin to take up uh, challenges of our nation. Like The central message here is that as Nigeria prepares for the forthcoming general election, it is pertinent for the youths to take a detour from events of the past and play a leading role in who becomes the nation's next leaders. Nigeria is a highly deficit in leadership capital at the moment. When young people learn the values of leadership, they will know how to reject the stomach infrastructure and then they think about delaying gratification for the progress of our great country. In the midst of rising security challenges, an economic downturn and political uncertainties, youths must take up the challenge of rising in defense of their country. Linus Okori believes that with more youth participation in affairs of governance, Nigeria's wars can be turned around. Every young person should get ready um, to be part of shaping this country, to be part of ensuring that only quality men and women from all sectors of the economy can emerge leaders in this country. That's the only way forward for Nigeria. The charge on the youth is to embrace leadership roles and make the needed change Nigeria requires at the most critical time of its existence. Choke TVC News, Abuja. In a bid to attract foreign direct investment to Niger State, Governor Babaka Sane Bello has held talks with business moguls at the Sakaya province in Turkey. And this is in furtherance of the bilateral talks that began in Abuja to bring investment in the healthcare and environment to the state. Most economies target increased foreign direct investment due to its importance in driving economic growth. FDI boosts the creation of jobs in the host country as investors build new companies in the country, which in turn leads to increased income, more purchasing power, and an overall boost in the economy. This is why the Niger State government is exploring windows of opportunities for mutually beneficial partnerships in the fields of healthcare, agriculture, livestock, infrastructure, renewable energy, ICT, and hospitality. Now, uh, what mechanization and engineering is all about in Nigeria. So, um, basically, with time, we see that the practice, the structural practice, right. changes from uh, that of subsistence to commercial uh, agriculture. If these partnerships succeed, the target is to scale up youth and women empowerment in the state, facilitate a clean as well as healthy environment, and improve internally generated revenue. This visit is a follow-up to a meeting earlier held in Abuja on strengthening bilateral trade. 
the delegation also visited some facilities around Sankaria province for possible replication in Niger state. Consequently, an agreement on principle was reached between the state government and the Sakaria province on the continuation of bilateral talks and joint cooperation. Chenemi Bami, TVC News, Mina. Well, let's go up north where over 1 million farmers in Sakoto State will benefit from free closed user group or SIM cards to enhance the dissemination of agriculture-related information among farmers in the state. This is the initiative of All Farmers Association of Nigeria, Sakoto State Chapter, to build capacity of their members towards improving agricultural activities to fight the looming food security threat in the country. Speaking at the flag of the exercise, the State Commissioner for Agriculture and Natural Resources, Aminu Ilela, says the initiative will make disbursement of agricultural loan easy and farmers will be accessible for training on technological advancement in agricultural practice. Professor Lela also believes the initiative will improve agribusiness with increased connectivity that will link farmers to available markets beyond the locality with multiplier of job creation and income generation. It will boost one the farming activities. Uh, all agricultural development could be uh, incorporated and uh, communicated to farmers across the country. It will also boost the economy of the state. It will also uh, provide employment opportunity. You can see the youths that are going to be employed to register. So it has a multidimensional uh, approach. So it's a very good uh, uh, welcome development that has been initiated by the All Farmers Association of Nigeria. It's a very then number two, it will aid the farmers to, to seek for assistance uh, by our uh, extension workers. They get their extension services free of charge using that SIM. Then they get information uh, that relate to new agricultural practice also free of charge on that. And they, 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 they will be linked to our warehouses where we will warehouse their product and loan them some money if need be.